We are here with a Cerberus solo guide. So as is the normal in the solo lane, we're going to be grabbing a Warrior's Blessing. I am going to be grabbing Blink. Um, for those that didn't see our Bologna solo guide, um, grabbing Blink is pretty risky um, for the solo lane. It's great if you don't end up getting your butt kicked. Uh, but if you get your butt kicked and you end up needing that teleport, then this can have disastrous um consequences so most definitely uh just be careful about that if you're feeling confident over in the solo feel free to grab that blink as your first active on cerberus uh being able to blink ulti is a huge huge deal on him if you're not feeling confident enough um in the laning phase then feel free to get that teleport as your first active and then give blink second so here on Cerberus, we are going to get our Ghastly Breath as our uh, first ability. Ghastly Breath does a solid amount of damage. It is a cone over time. It procs, I do believe, yeah, seven times over 2.4 seconds. Uh, it does damage. It is a slow, and it is also a protection shred. Uh, it will also... Uh, stack up all of your three heads of Cerberus um, when you have your uh, one leveled. And we'll talk about uh, the effects of that once we get a little bit into it. Uh, but once again, that is a cone damaging ability over time that slows and is a protection shred. So it does a lot of damage and it is typically the ability that you want to uh, use first because it's gonna give you that protection shred on your target to allow you to do more damage to them. Cerberus' passive is actually a very, very strong passive. Uh, and being against Xing Ten is going to be a interesting um, thing to talk through actually. So let's look at this passive. Cerberus' passive when uh, enemy gods are in range when they are in range uh he siphons some of their healing so when there's a god within 40 units of cerberus and that that is healing that healing is reduced by 20 percent so he has built an anti-heal on his passive and cerberus receives 50 percent of that healing that they're doing now keep in mind that healing in smite and anti-healing in smite, this is referring to everything except HP 5. Everything except, I'm talking Devo Gloves Life Seal, I'm talking Aphrodite 3, I'm talking Camazot, uh heals from his abilities, yeah. all of it, except for HP 5. So Xing Tian has a lot of HP 5 that he gets from using his abilities. I do not get to siphon healing from his HP 5. That is not how it works in Smite. Make sure I get those Warriors Blessing procs whenever I can in the laning phase. Uh, I'm mostly focused on clearing the wave. Mostly focused on getting away right now as I get ganked by this Robin. Uh, my primary focus in the solo lane is not necessarily to get kills. Uh, nothing wrong with getting some good poke online. Um, but because I went the blink instead of the teleport, I'm mostly concerned about getting enough gold in order to get my um, boots online. That way I can just go ahead and back safely uh, and walk back to the lane. The ability that we get second on Cerberus is going to be our one. Uh, this is his most important ability to land and is also um, tends to be a kind of difficult ability for people. It used to be way, way, way harder to land. Um, so luckily it's not like it used to be. But this ability is based off of these three heads that you see here. When you auto attack, one, two, three, you will stack up those three heads. Or if you use your two, that will also stack up your three heads. Keep in mind on your auto attacks, you can't auto attack once and then back up and go back in and auto attack once to get the next head stacked. It is literally auto attacking with each individual head of Cerberus. So if I go in and land another auto attack, you will see that it actually doesn't stack my head. 
because I'm still attacking with the middle head, actually. Just a little fun uh, Cerberus tidbit. I'm gonna use my one there with only one head. You can see that it was much less of an ability use right there. So the more of these heads that you have stacked up, the more projectiles come out from your one. Those projectiles do damage. Hitting the same target with multiple projectiles Gang deals 20% less damage. Um, but if you hit with all four of the projectiles, it will stun. It is a one second stun, ranking all the way up to 1.8 seconds. This is the ability that we are going to max second on Cerberus. Your standard goal is to walk up to somebody, hit them with this bleed so that they get themselves nice and uh, armor shredded and then smack him with the one just like that in order to get the stun. Uh, the way that Cerberus one works is a little bit funky. Uh, in order to hit the ability, you basically have two options. Um, those two options are to use it point blank and hit it right at the start. Or the best option is to actually use it and try to hit at the very end of that ult, uh, at, at, of that indicator, and that will let you land that stun as well. Um, so normally we would level up the two and then the one first, uh, but this is actually going to be a game where we're going to level up our one to max and then our two. Uh, the reason why we're going to be switching this up is this Xing Ten is using his knockup to interrupt me out of the two very consistently. Um, because of that, I'm going to level up my one to make sure that I still have the lane clear and damage output, even if he were to interrupt me. So if I wasn't getting interrupted, I would be leveling up my two to max first because I am getting interrupted. I'm gonna go ahead and just level up the one because he can't interrupt me uh, from using that. Cerberus's third ability is his leap. Uh, it is your getaway skill. It is your initiation tool, whatever you wish to use it as. You can see why he's constantly waiting, trying to interrupt me uh, with with his dash. I can actually go kind of aggressive here. I got to be careful for his ultimate, but if I can jump over his ulti, I've got a shot. Or if I can stun him and then ulti him before he can get it off. Oh, it's gonna be close. Ooh, okay, I've got the blink. Three, two, one. No, he's gonna go all the way. That's all right. If I would've hit that jump, he would have died right there, but I was so concerned about yes. jumping over that I didn't get it. So, Cerberus is three. Let's use the opportunity back up. Cerberus is three. We're gonna get ourselves uh, a void zone over here. You jump in, when you land on the targeter, it does damage. Um, and if you hit targets within that range, uh, it makes basically a ghost version of the targets that you hit. Um, those souls that pop up will give Cerberus a self heal. So I jump in on these three minions. You can see like a ghost version made of them. When you slay those ghost versions of yourself, um, it gives you a fairly chonky heal for a Cerberus. Not bad at all. Uh, you can see that you get heal per minion, uh, the difference between heal per god, uh, and the soul as well, which is very nice. You can see how much health that the actual souls have you have to go through. Um, a little strange part of this interaction, it actually makes your auto attacks AOE when you're attacking a soul. I'm not exactly sure why it does that, um, but normally uh, Serb's autos are not AOE, but I'm gonna run over to this camp. Uh, you can actually see that when I auto this, it's gonna hit all of everything in front of me. Um, so you actually have an AOE auto when you go to attack those souls. Not really any actual gameplay implications to that other than it helps you uh, clear out those souls faster, um, but just kind of keep that in mind. And finally, Cerberus's ultimate, uh, which we used earlier on the Xing Tian. Funny enough, Xing Tian has a kind of similar ulti in that it is also a toss. Uh, in a large area around you, you start a animation that does have a bit of a channel time, so it doesn't go off immediately. Uh, there is an opportunity for people to do things like preemptively beads or even potentially jump out of this ability. So keep that in mind when you use it. 
when you go down and the ultimate actually starts, you will do a round of damage to all enemies inside of that circle. 160 to 440 damage. And then after about a second or so, you will throw everybody that you grabbed to a target location. I'm gonna jump in on these minions to get the heal effect. I'm gonna use my ulti to CC immune the Xing Chan's ulti right there so he doesn't uh, toss me like Gimli. And I'm gonna try to land my one on him for some damage there at the end. Uh, this is going to be your major initiation ability uh, that you utilize. Uh, it is what makes Cerberus so scary in team fights. A lot of the times, what you're gonna end up grabbing with this is beads or CC immune ultis. Uh, but you should basically utilize this ultimate like you would utilize uh, an Ares ult. Very, very similar in nature. And that's what you should be uh, thinking middle. about when you're using it. So on Cerberus in the solo lane, uh, we're going to be building him with kind of a hybrid build. Hybrid builds are looking pretty good uh, with the mid-season patch. So we're going to be going uh, into a, a Void Stone, which gives me the magical defenses against the Xing Tian here in the lane. You can also see that they're running three magical gods, Xing Tian, Yamoja, and Sol, and two physical gods, Robin and Cern. So my number one concern right now is magical defense. So I grab the Void Stone for me. I've got the cooldown boots in order to be able to use my abilities more often. Sir, uh, Serb has pretty long cooldowns, uh, so getting a CDR on him is a very nice. Uh, you're always going to want to get CDR and Serb. Uh, hopefully somewhere near that 30% marker. Next up, I'm going to be going Stone of Binding for some more penetration on Cerberus. Uh, the Void Stone is going to give me some uh, percent pen in the area, reducing their magical protections by 10%. So that's the equivalent of 10% magical pen. Uh, it's actually a little bit better than magical pen because of the way that penetration works in Smite. Uh, but maybe we'll talk about that a little bit later. And then we're going to be going the Stone of Binding, which of course is going to give us some physical magical defenses, uh, but it's also just a great early game item for damage output. You combine the penetration that you're getting from these items with the penetration shred that you're getting um, from Cerberus as two, uh, which is a max of three stacks. So we're talking somewhere near 50s uh, in the protection reduction department at the end, 18 times three. That's a huge deal. And it's why Cerberus can slap so hard, even on tanky targets. Every time Xing Chen is ulting, I'm basically just going to counter ulti him uh, just so he can't throw me out of position or into a tower or something. Uh, I should mention on Cerberus 2 uh, that you can actually see that the ability has a inner section and an outer section on this cone. Uh, think about this kind of like... Uh, Kind of like Nemesis, where Nemesis gets extra effects on her ability on the inside um, compared to the outside of that cone section. Same deal with Cerberus. Um, if they are in the inside of that breath, that's when you get the slow uh, on those targets. You have to be hitting them on the inside of that breath portion. I'm going to be honest, it's not hard to hit the inside of the breath portion. You really don't have to be concerned about it on Cerberus. Um, you should be hitting it pretty much willy-nilly. It is still um, a giant cone effect. Um, so on Cerberus, you can see that we are not necessarily leveling our ulti uh, to max before our other abilities. On Cerberus, I like to uh, get my two at level one. Then I like to get my... Where is my Pridvin? I'm going to get my Pridvin going next to expensive for me right now. Uh, so I like to get the two at level one, and then I like to get my one at level two, finally getting my three at three. But in terms of maxing these abilities, I would standardly max two, one, four, three. Uh, this game, because we had somebody that could interrupt us, I maxed one, two, four, three. Uh, that is my standard level order there for Cerberus. Like I said, two if you can, uh, but if you're getting interrupted, no problem getting your one first. The only thing with getting your one maxed first 
is just do be aware this is a harder ability to hit um i know some people will be like i don't know man it's super easy to hit i hit it all the time i'm just saying if you're a new player to smite it is a fairly unique ability in the way that it fires and the way that it works uh it is just gonna be a little bit more difficult particularly is going to be way more difficult uh it's gonna be way more difficult than just landing uh your uh two that is a four-man rotation over to the solo lane no way to live that uh smartly our chronos has started up the gold fury in that time so we've got good penetration coming out from stone of binding and void some we get a nice 10 flat pen from Stone of Binding, and we get 10% flat pen from Voidstone. You combine that with our awesome penetration that we get from our two, and we've basically got true damage against squishy targets right now. Uh, so I got Thorns as my second act of this game. The reason why I got Thorns is because they are rocking two auto attackers right now. They are running soul and cernanos not only are they running soul and cernanos they also have a good bit oh of healing God. on their team you can see that um they've got yamoja for the healing which is great because my passive affects that uh but what we're really trying to look at here is the soul self-healing and the cern self-healing both the soul and the cern are going to have healing built into their kit plus they're going to be building life steal because of that, we want to get the thorns. Our thorns, when we rank it up, is going to give us, um, uh, going to make sure that our enemies that hit us only have 50%, 50% efficiency from lifesteal, uh, which is super awesome. And if we combine that with our passive, taking away 20%, uh, it's actually a 70% reduction. And that is without any life. Uh, uh, that is without any anti-healing actual items on us, which is awesome. Gonna be running straight at this Xing Tian boy. Kali's coming over. I'm gonna ulti him and throw this guy into the wall. Get him as far away um, from his tower as I can. I'm gonna jump over this. Look for the stun. I'm not quite gonna reach. That's okay. I've got my blink. If I can get through this, I'm not gonna be able to. So now I'm just gonna turn on Soul. That's her Aegis. They've got four people over here once again. I'm stacking up my, my heads right there, looking for the stun. Not going to land. That's right. We're going to jump on in. Going to give me that nice little soul ghost, which is going to heal me up. And now we're shoving down the right lane. I don't have my third head stacked up, so I've got to do one, two, three autos in order to get that head stacked up. Now I can go in, look aggressively, go get some damage on the Emoja and Xing Chen. Cerberus has great AoE damage that we can utilize. We should probably back up off of this. Howard, <laughs> Lulu just tanking the tower with all of his heart, which I respect. He's going to die for that. But look at this burst damage that you can break out. Little Cerberus plus some Itanami damage right there going to burn us right through this tower. So let's talk a little bit about um, the penetration that we mentioned earlier with how Pen works in Smite and the reason why uh, Voidstone is actually the best version of Percent Pen. So Smite penetration works in the following order. Aura penetration, flat pen, percent pen. This is uh, the way that penetration uh, will work against your enemy's defenses. So if an enemy has 100 defenses, and you have 10% uh, aura pen from, say, a void stone, and you've got 10 flat pen, and then let's say you've got another 10% pen from an item on your character. So that's going to proc in the following order. You're going to get the 10% flat, uh, excuse me, you're going to get the 10% aura pen from void stone, which is going to work on the 100 defenses. So now they've got 90 defenses left. Then you're going to get the 10 flat pen from your 10 flat pen item. Now they will have 80 defenses, and then it will proc the 10 percentage pen that you have from your item, like a Soul Reaver, which is going to be 8 pen, because that 8 pen is procking off of the 80 defenses that they now have left. 
So the aura percent pan is really nice because the aura percent pan is gonna proc first before the flat penetration, uh, meaning you're gonna get more effectiveness out of that percent pen. So aura penetration and uh, flat pen stack really, really well together. And that's how uh, penetration works uh, in smite against your opponents. Now, once you factor in the fact that Serb has another 56 or whatever it is, 54 flat pen reduction that he can do, you can see how quickly uh, somebody from like 100 protections can go down to like zero protections with a Cerberus. Now that all the towers are down around the map, I am free to roam around the map as a solo laner. Gonna pop my thorns. Reminder that you can pop thorns even while CC'd. Uh, so never be afraid to do that. Gotta jump in right on this soul. She should be dead. It's Nami. No reason for me to continue to chase that. I'll attack the gold fury. We're gonna walk over to the gold fury. It is now 20 minutes into this game, which means it is basically objective time. Uh, 20 minutes is a very solid time to start doing the fire giant and smite as well. It might seem pretty early from a historical perspective in smite. Um, but fire giants are very easily getting done uh, in the 15 to 20 minute marker uh, for the first fire giant. So don't be afraid of doing them a little bit early, especially if you've got percent shred, uh, if you've got like protection shred that you can use on an objective, even easier to help burn it down uh, for your team. Um, so for Cerberus, uh, if you watch this one, boop, you can see that it does in fact go through walls. So don't be afraid to use your one through walls the same way that you would use, say, an Ares chain through walls in order to get a kill. Your one goes through walls, uh, your two does not, your three will go over walls, and your four does not go through walls. So one and three for through walls on Cerberus, two and four uh, not through walls on Cerberus. As far as how you're looking to play the Cerberus solo, uh, you're mostly looking to be frontline. Uh, the reason why I like Cerberus as a solo laner better than support is one, he's got so much pen built in his kit that he has so much damage potential actually. Um, which is why I like to use him in a role that can build a little bit more on the penetration side, a little bit more on the damage side uh, to utilize that awesome flat pen that he gives. So you get that awesome damage output going. And Cerberus' kit is really good at killing squishies and CCing the back line. While Cerberus can peel, uh, he is most at home when he is able to throw down a stun on Yamoja and follow it up, you know, with a nice combo. When he can run at the Robin and try to hold down the W key. Um, so while he has the capability of peeling, if you absolutely need to, I much prefer to use him as a damaged frontliner compared to a backline peeler. So now that we've got the Pritivin online, we've got that 30% CDR. We also get that awesome shield effect after our ulti. We're gonna rock that into a Spiro Rope which is gonna finish up our cooldown. That's gonna give us a nice 40% uh, CDR as well as give us some CCR as well to reduce our crowd control. Um, we're going to grab ourselves a ranked up thorn. So now we have that anti life steal effect when we pop our thorns. And eventually we are going to sell this warrior's blessing and I would probably get a little bit more damage this game. Preferably something around the flat pen department. Um, for this game, it would be a divine ruin. I don't have an anti-heal item for the emoja, but I can get a divine ruin for that flat penetration. Flat penetration has a cap of 50 in smite. But if you're reducing their protections, that does not count towards your flat pen cap. So the 54 protections that we can reduce yes. from Cerberus 2 does not count to our 50 flat pen cap from items. Those are separate. The same way that Void Stones 10% magical penetration aura does not count towards your 40% penetration cap. Those caps are all separate from each other. 
then you can try to cap them all out if you need to. We're gonna blink into this fight on Soul. Gonna land my two. Get her down to about half HP. She uses her three to try to get away. I'm gonna tie my ulti right after her three ends. Throw him around this wall. Unfortunately, he actually gets stuck on the wall. So I'm gonna use my thorns. Try to get enough damage off. We got the Pridvin slow off on her. Not gonna be enough. No, the killer. Uh, one thing to note about Cerberus ulti that is different than uh, Ares ult. Ares ult will always yoink them right to you. Cerberus ultimate yanks them to the target, but things like walls do get in the way. So I ulted her right by a wall. I tried to ulti her past it, but she got stuck on the wall. And so she only ulted basically a little bit to the side. So keep that in mind when you're using that Cerberus ultimate. Your left tower. Now our standard combination that we're gonna use is gonna be one of the following. Uh, the easiest combination in the middle of a team fight, just like Ares, if you can get yourself a big group ulti, blink in ulti, no questions asked. Do that every single time. There's nothing wrong with that. Blink ulti, you're gonna burn a bunch of beads, a bunch of ultis, and you'll throw somebody back towards your team. Of course, be careful who you're throwing back to your team. Um, if I blink in an ulti and I grab the Xing Chen, there's a decent chance I don't want to throw the Xing Chen into my team uh, because then he's just going to grab my team and throw them back into his team. So be careful about who you're throwing. If I'm not going to blink in uh, and go for the ulti immediately, then I'm going to blink in and I'm going to bait some CC immunity. I'm going to jump over this Cerberus ult to make sure that I don't get hit by it. Waiting on my ultimate right now until I can find a better target than this Xing Chen or until he has more abilities down. I'm gonna jump in towards mid lane. I'm looking for the soul. I'm not gonna be able to reach him. So I'm gonna look for Robin. He rooted me so I wasn't in range of my ultimate. Uh, we've got five people up, but ending the game right now would be a little bit difficult unless that soul dies right now. We gotta be careful. We should actually go to the fire giant right now. So the other combination, instead of the, the blink ulti, is going to be blink going in with a two. You're going to start slowing everybody around them. You're going to start taking away all of their protections for your team. Your team might even be able to follow up on this because of the protection to go for kills. Or you scare them and you force them to use some CC immunity from your slow. You follow it up with the stun. You do all those abilities first. And then you use your ultimate after you've done your blink in. Uh, and maybe some of their beads, maybe some of their ultis are down in order to guarantee that you're going to land uh, that pull uh, towards your team. We're going to head right back down the right game here at the end of the very end of this game. My job is to get in and be aggressive. We got Lulu uh, as a support. Lulu is a, a pretty aggressive support as well. Doesn't exactly have great peel. So I should keep my eyes around the Kali, Izanami, and Kronos to make sure just in case they end up needing somebody to peel for them. Never commit yourself 100% um, to a certain play style uh, without being able to change it during the middle of the game. Uh, in this game in particular, we've got a nice lead and our, our uh, strategy is working out so far, so I feel no need to change it. But if you get stuck with a one type of play style uh, inside of a match, you're going to find that you're not able to do as many comebacks as maybe you should be able to because uh, you weren't willing to make those gameplay changes mid-game. Going to slow down this Robin. He uses ulti. I'm looking at the soul on the side coming up behind her. She does a really well-timed ulti to immune... Uh, to immune my ultimate so she doesn't get pulled. Walk back over here, grab ourselves a Phoenix, but my blink is still up. So I can still look for a blink two to slow somebody down, but there's really no reason for us to go super aggressive into this Titan room when we can so easily grab that right side Phoenix. Now we've got a bunch of creeps coming from mid, a bunch of creeps coming from right. We've got the anti-heal with our Divine Ruin. We've got so much penetration in our kit. And this has been a pretty standard solo lane match. 
Oftentimes in the solo lane, you can't get involved in every single kill. Sometimes your team either wins or loses the game uh, before you get super involved in the match. But that's pretty standard for the solo lane. And luckily for us, uh, this was more towards the, uh, the winning side compared to the losing side of the team putting in a lot of work. Couldn't quite kill the Titan right there, actually. Looks like some of our backline boys got zoned out. The Itsunami died. The Kronos went down. No problem. So we're going to save up some cash, work on our Elixir of Speed. You can see that we are not very tanky this game. 179 physical protections, 208 magical protections. A respectable amount of protections, but not like a disgusting amount. This is closer towards the amount of protections that I like. Um, nowadays, for the tankier gods, uh, this goes for solo and support. Uh, as far as the changes to physical penetration in the mid-season patch, there's so many people, mages and physicals alike now, that have 40% penetration, which means that just stacking up on protections is really not the way to go anymore. Um, because of all of that penetration potential in the game, if you're just stacking up on your uh, protections, you're not gonna be as effective as you could. So I prefer a little bit more into that hybrid, right around, I would say 180 to 220 protections is like a solid spot that still allows you to do other things like build high into the um, cooldown department and uh, building some penetration for your team. We've got the Aura Pen uh, from multiple items with the Void Stone and the Stone of Binding helping our team. We've got ourselves some percent mitigations, uh, which is much better and more efficient uh, than necessarily the flat protections are. So basically what we're doing now is we're just waiting to get everybody respawned so we can go ahead and attack the Titan and put this one away. Last little reminder that for using your Cerberus 1, the easiest place to hit your Cerberus 1 and get that sun effect is going to be that very edge tippity point. The second place that you can best hit it and get that sun effect is going to be right up point blank. Those are basically your two options. You'll practice using it and you'll see uh, the most effective range for it. You can see right there, I was kind of in between those two spots, so it didn't actually land. I, I want to mention here at the very end as well um, that Cerberus Ultimate just flat out does really good damage. Um, 440 damage plus the 100. So we're looking at a 550 damage ability that very easily you could use on three plus people in a team fight. There is nothing wrong just using it for its damage portion, even knowing that you're not going to get that much utilization out of the actual pull aspect. It just does good damage. So feel free to use it uh, in a team fight for those purposes. Really, same thing goes for all of Serb's abilities. I did 20,000 damage in that game as a Cerberus solo, and I was only involved in 11 of our kills. I didn't have that much aggression in the early game. I was mostly focused on things like farming. So you can see how much damage output Cerberus can have, even if you don't get involved in so many fights uh, during the match. And that is why he makes a much better solo laner than he does a support.